How you been, dude? I mean, uh, good. How about you? How about you? You know what? Uh, I hate to say it, but I'm fucking getting used to this shit. <sighs> Which fucking sucks. I, and I'm not to the point I'm getting used to it, like to be fucking jailed in my own home, but you know, it's kind of becoming normal. And I'm gonna I'm I'm happy you're recording this because I, I've come up with I'm gonna punch somebody in the face the next time somebody says the new normal. There's no such thing as normal. Yeah. There's we have our everyday lives. We have all right, so now we just have a different life. That's all it is. It's it's I I hate that saying. It's right up there with, well, it is what it is. Fuck you. I'm tired of that saying as well. No, it's not. It is what it is. It's uh, it's definitely different. Uh, You know, went to Audi to go shopping for a neighbor because she has lupus. And um, everybody has masks. I have my own mask on as well. And on the floor, there's stickers saying, hey, social distancing, stay six feet apart. Mm -hmm. And we went to go to check out. We had to stand in aisle three. And then they called you over to, uh, to check out. And of course, everybody, all the, all the supermarkets over here now have these plexiglass kind of mm-hmm. guards around. Yeah, them. right in front of them. Yep, yeah, yep. they did that really quickly. So I'm not sure how yeah. that fucked happened so quick. It's amazing, you know, what money can do, right? I mean, you oh, want yeah. some shit. Um, but yeah, that's you know, I don't think it's gonna go away. I think that's gonna be ongoing. So the life that we knew of before, of being so you know just openly and free. Listen, when I came from. New York to Georgia, and there was no bulletproof glass at the banks. I was like, "What the fuck is this? I could touch the item teller." Yeah, I never, I never grew up without one in New York. Mm-hmm. So when I seen that for the first time, I was like, "I can touch you. Aren't you scared?" <laughs> and then years later, now they have them up. Now, you know that was twenty years ago when I came to Atlanta, but now they actually have them up. So not there's not there's not one bank. Well. Some banks still have there's no there's no plexiglass. Um, you won't find that in New York City though. Um, so that was a change. That was you know a culture a cultural thing I had to get I had to adjust to. I think this is part of it. This is our new culture. I think this is in addition to what we we're going for before. We have a heavy population now around the world, seven eight billion people. You know by twenty thirty what another two billion will probably be added. We're gonna have more of this shit happening. Yeah, but I mean, I I just look at it this way, and that is, this is, I, I don't want to sound like Pollyanna, but this is just a bump in the road. And part of me is, is essentially freaking out because uh, my grandmother, who's in her late 90s, I talked to her, but my biggest paranoia there is she's going to get it. Right. And pass away and I, I i don't get to say bye yeah so that's that's part of reality though that is when you have older you know parents older grandparents it's unfortunately part of life but right now i don't want to sound i'm going to sound selfish but i'm very happy because you know my dreaded day job is normally normally 100% travel. I'm not traveling. Yeah. And I love it. I love working from home. I love, you know, being able to try and make dinner and try and, uh, you know, do what I'd rather be doing. So in between the dreaded day job, you know, I've got blending the family I'm, I'm working on. And so to me, this would be my culture. This would be my way of life is to be at home working from home. So I, I, don't, I don't know where we're going to be headed, you know, day by day, as a lot of us don't know, but I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be selfish. I'm enjoying it right now, and I'm taking full advantage of it right now. Are you going to be shaking hands? Mm-hmm. I have no, I have no problem. I, we were uh, cleaning the garage this past weekend and uh, one of the kids' friends came by 
it was an instinct. I, I shook his hand. I'm like, uh, it's what I, I, yeah, I can't stop me. That's, that's me. I, I like, I like shaking hands. I'm a hugger. Um, so I'm not going to change who I am. What if society changes though? People around you change and they don't shake hands anymore. They either bow like the Japanese or some shit and idiots still text and drive. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to change who I am. But uh, the, you are, you are going to run into people who, who are going to say, no, I'm not going to shake your hand. That's fine. Elbow bump, you know, namaste. Yeah. You know, whatever, whatever they're comfortable with, I'm fine. But if they want to shake my hand, they want to do the bro hug, bring it in, you know, I, it's all good. So me and Lovely was supposed to take a vacation this, past, this summer coming up. We were supposed to go to Vegas. Everything planned. And then this shit happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, so t- tentatively, it's canceled right now. And so we figure out what does traveling look like? How do we protect ourselves? What, do, what measures hotels are going to take to you know, go to Vegas? I want to see shows. That's the whole point. I'm not, I'm not a gambler. We'll probably do some penny slots or whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the goal was to go see a lot of shows. Well, now they're saying you can't be. You know, they're not doing shit in arenas. Sports is canceled for the rest of the year. Right. right. So what the fuck now? How am I going to really like, enjoy my vacation? Uh, especially in casino, right? Because you're, you're close to a lot of fucking people. Um, but what are you? Where, where, like my pool. My pool is probably not going to open now. Mm-hmm. Right. So what are we supposed to fucking do going forward since we are stuck right now? Do we just say, you know what? 2020 is a loss as far as having that type of engagement until next year to see what comes up, what comes from it. Um, these are, these are learning opportunities. That's how I look at it. These are learning opportunities. You know, I've got a dear friend of mine who's in a similar situation as you and lovely. He and his family were scheduled to do a cruise. Mm-hmm. Cruise is canceled. Yeah. So the, all right. So what do you do now? You know, my wife and I want to go up cause we live in Colorado. We want to, uh, this summer go up to the mountains for a weekend probably not going to happen you know what we have tents downstairs let's just go grab a tent and go in the backyard um so somebody posted on instagram uh, a poll question what is your favorite streaming app i said a book read a goddamn book yeah so there are well you know quote unquote workarounds so you don't go to Vegas this year. Guess what? You save the money, you go next year. You know, yeah. that way, that way, by that time, you're going to be living large. You're going to be in a penthouse suite. You're not going to be playing penny slots. You're going to be playing nickel slots, okay? Oh, man. man. Yeah. You have dreams for me. I appreciate that. I know. That's what I'm here for. I just think right now, too many people are thinking of the negative side effects of all this. Let's look at the positive. Um, people are in a good way coming out of the woodworks and serving other people. They're helping, uh, you know, a lot of the restaurants that are, are able to stay open are providing free food to healthcare workers. Well, well I'm glad you mentioned restaurants real quick, right? So um, my question is this though, right? So they're talking about restaurants will have to probably take away seating of some kind and have distant seating. Do you think because of the the less patrons that have coming in, will prices go up? Prices have already gone up. You go to a grocery store, prices have already gone up. So, I mean, that's that's part of the culture. That's part of business. That's part of, you know, going through something as uh, extreme as what we're going through right now. Prices have already gone up. I, I mean good, bad, indifferent, that's, that's, that's how it is right now. Now, once, once, you know, we see the so-called flattening of the curve and we start seeing results and even the possibility of having a uh, vaccine for this, you'll see 
the economics come back, you will see, in my view, I'm, I'm no economic major, not uh, far from it, but I firmly believe that things like this will make our economy stronger. I firmly believe that we're going to see some new shit coming out of this. I mean, yeah. technology wise, business wise, you know, again, I don't, I don't want to say that life is rainbows and uh, unicorns, poop and Skittles, but I think there are times when we go through crisis like this, we find ways to get through it. And this I, I, is I, one I agree of those with that. times. Yeah, I agree with that. I think, um, I think we are going to, see a new wave of of technology and investment and creativity um i think you're gonna see a lot of that i think we're gonna have to have employees gonna have to hold employers accountable as well you know Mm -hmm. do you go back to the day-to-day regular office gig and how is that set up and how they're protecting you with your demands i think this is a huge a huge opportunity for unions to come back really oh really yeah because now that you have the social distancing, if companies don't want to comply with that, like a lot of these tech companies like to do warm desk seating, like, you know, mm-hmm. you don't have, to have a desk or cubicles anymore. You just sit wherever the fuck you want to sit at. Well, who, what's the cleaning protocol on that? If someone gets up, am I responsible? Is that person responsible? How do I know that person did it? If I don't see someone there. Right. So why not have a union now saying, you know what, this is the protocol since people put in place. You know, I need an actual cubicle now. I want my own little kind of area that's sectioned off and quarantined kind of. And going back to like the blase days of back in the day, you can have these banks of cubicles like before. Oh God, stop. You're, you're bringing me back some bad, bad fucking memories of cubicle farm. <laughs> yeah. So, but, um, the, but think about that, right? So I think that's a play for a union. I think if someone really wanted to play that, they could. And people had to comply based off of that. And it'd probably be the, the first time that's really been about part. No, I'm not going to say first time. There's industrial revolution. You know what I'm saying? You had hella work issues, not just for health, but mainly for just the actual work environment itself. I would say this would be really just pertaining to the health environment of, of a place, you know, and, and how can a union play off of that? I think you're going to see some unions try to go there. Eh, just bring communism back. That's all. <sighs> Man, and that's the thing, right? So it comes down to play, like, you know, I see all this shit on fucking Facebook, and I got, I ain't getting into an argument with someone. I, just for reference for people, I've, 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 I'm not on Facebook. I'm horrible for Facebook. But you have but, a Facebook account. But I have a Facebook account. And Why? I have friends. Of Why? 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 Well, this was 12 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So I did it. I had to just connect with friends or whatever. Never really used it to connect with friends. I just text people. I just call them. Um, had it, I would post every now and then, you know, a picture or whatever, because it connected to my Instagram. So it automatically goes to Facebook. And if you do Instagram, they force you to get the Facebook page anywhere. I'm not, I, I, so, I refuse to. I, but hold I, on. I, I disconnected my Facebook. I don't have Facebook. So with that being said, when the COVID happened, I was like, oh, let me just see what's on there. People always saying Facebook that the fake news on Facebook and people fighting and arguing. It's like, what is it to argue on Facebook? Right. So I get on, I get on and my childhood friends are a bunch of fucking morons. Right. So um, the conspiracy theories and just the way of thinking and the lack of, of fact checking resources, or even having resources and saying the word day. And I question those things. So I, message back and say okay wow so where'd you get your information from oh they said it well i don't know who the fuck day is who is who is they right so i questioned that oh you know what i'm talking about the government okay what about the government as you can see the government is no shit because they can't even handle this shit yeah people people give the government like they, they see all these fucking movies that the government's doing some all this fantastic shit in the background or all this shady shit the government doesn't know how to ask from the elbow you know what i'm saying they do certain things okay. You know, they, they, they know how to fucking handle war. Mm-hmm. They practice that shit every fucking day. They obviously didn't practice this shit. They so this this so no interest whatsoever to practice this bullshit. And they fucking shows. Every state is fucked. The whole nation's fucked. The whole world is fucked. The whole world is like, yo, fuck this shit. All right? We're not going to invest in this. We'll set up some fucking organization. That's it. So long story short, I, I didn't get into an argument, but I did get into a, a back and forth of saying, hey, 
give me your resources mm-hmm. to the point that we're like, oh, I spoke to someone that uh, that uh, you know that has some insight into this. Okay, so you posting on Facebook is gonna do what exactly? Go to a news outlet, say, hey, this is what I got. Put it out there. If you really want to help people, instead of saying he he actually said, oh, I'm just gonna sit back and see the shit show that happens. I said, really? You really want to see chaos happen? So his thing was that at the end of the month of May 1st, all the, all the landlords in New York City were banding together to evict everyone. So I asked him, I said, you mean to tell me these motherfuckers, tens of thousands of landlords got mm-hmm. together and they got into a meeting. They probably did a Zoom meeting. Oh, yeah. Tens of thousands of people, landlords, and decided we're going to evict millions of people. Yeah. From their homes on May first, I said, "What does that sound like?" And how did you know about this secret meeting that they had on Zoom? <laughs> of course, he didn't answer that right away. Oh, then he was like, uh, "Well, you believe what you want to believe." I said, "Well, that's not answering my question." I said, "Plus, I said, didn't your governor suspend uh, evictions and, and mortgage mm-hmm. shit back in March?" Oh, you know they can switch that. I said, "Why would they?" I said, why would they want chaos of millions of people homeless? I said, you wouldn't have a state anymore. You have just a piece of land. Vermont would come take it over. Jersey would take some over. <laughs> and New York <laughs> there is no more. You know, hey, you know Jersey's gonna be taking it over. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, I was like, really think. I was like, what sense does it make the government to shut down the economy when it was booming like a motherfucker? To go from a hundred to zero. I said, that makes no sense. Well, here, here's all right. Two things come to mind. Number one, get rid of your fucking Facebook account. Here's here's why I dropped mine. I have a dear friend, grew up with, high school with. Um, he is he. When I think of the word Republican, I think of him. Okay. I, I always believe it doesn't matter the party. Vote for the person. Doesn't matter the party. Anyway, he was just at the time. I'll admit it. I'm a huge, I was a huge Obama supporter and my buddy was just ripping on him. So I said, you know what? I don't, as my mom would say, whenever my ex-wife would say shit in email or whatever, my mom would say, she's running space in your head, <laughs> evict her. And so that's what I did with Facebook. I said, I- I'm done with Facebook, done. So one of the things I started thinking about as you're talking is flipping the the, the positive to what's going on. So for example, today at, at noon, I'm going over to Texas Roadhouse and picking up an order. The way restaurants, I'm gonna use restaurants, are getting more and more creative is brilliant because yes, they have to survive. Yeah. And um, I, I feel really bad because last night, um, Every place I called to order food, I, I couldn't get through. And I finally got through, and I'm going uh, I'm, I to I'm gonna say something bad. And, and I ordered, uh, my wife and I ordered uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. And it was a shit show because they are not, that particular one was not prepared on how to handle curbside. Right. So not only was I sitting there for over 20 minutes waiting for our order, Another 20 minutes to get home. The wings were cold. The fries were shit. But the, the, the point I'm making, though, is these are new opportunities in the restaurant world on how to get creative. There's another restaurant in our area that on Wednesdays, it's half bottle wine Wednesdays. They also have a lunch special. Um, a couple of paninis, bottle of wine, 40 bucks. Now. If we weren't going through what we we're going through, would somebody in that restaurant come up with the idea, hey, let's do X. So when you're on the social media and you see all these uh, negative things out there and these conspiracy theories out there, it, it, turn it off. Don't, don't, don't read it. Don't engage in it. It's about, as I would, this drives my grandmother nuts when I say the difference between the world and my world. 
My world is my family. My world is friends like you, Johnny. My world is taking care of the yard. My world is making coffee. That's my world. The world, I, 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 don't, I don't let it, I try not to let it infiltrate my mind. I, I'll get informed and go, you know what? Time to move on. What yeah. is my day look like today? What do I want to accomplish today? Yeah. So that's, I'm looking at opportunities right now. I mean, I'm looking at how can we as individuals help each other move forward? That's, that's how no, I look yeah, at it. You're absolutely right. You know, I'm looking at new things. I'm also, you no. Know, this is a time to to expand on shit. I have a couple of people who actually hit me up saying, "Hey, let me give me your schedule. Let me know I'm available now." Um, to talk. So that's that's what I'm gonna do, and consistently push it out. I mean, but look I at the right look now, at Instagram right now with your photo- your photography. I mean, I'm loving it. I I mean, you make my day, Johnny, because when I when I uh one of the f- it's not Instagram is not one of the first apps I open up. I I. I look at uh, news, Huffington Post, uh, Flipboard. Uh, what's the other one? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Instagram. Oh, um, the app, app, Apple, the Mac app, news app. Anyway. Yeah. But then I go look at Instagram and and I see some of your photos out there. I'm like, oh, the way you use black and white. And then add a little bit of color here. I love it. I mean, I appreciate it. As I as I told you on um, on Instagram, as I spit all over my monitor, I get excited about I get excited <laughs> about stuff like this because I was raised by uh, my dad who had a uh, advertising business, and so he was heavily involved with photography. And I remember him getting. Uh, me involved in that and I remember getting my first camera where you had to load film and in grade school I learned how to do photography and how to uh, develop my own film and so that's that's what your pictures remind me of is taking my 35 millimeter camera who or or, uh, my son now has and my son is using it we just gotta get some film developed to see how it looks but those are the positives I like looking at on, on Instagram. There are some positive things even on LinkedIn that I look forward to yeah. every single day. And again, I don't want the news to rent space in people's heads because it will drive you fucking bonkers. No, you're absolutely right. And that's why I picked up my camera again. And I felt like I had, it's my way of documenting it. You know what I'm saying? So years back, you know, my younger kids could look back and say, wow, I knew I grew up in that, but I don't remember it because I was locked in the house doing homeschooling. Mm-hmm. And I want them to see certain things and just emptiness. You know, I have some other pictures I'm going to be putting up that you're going to see that it's just my son alone. Mm-hmm. And this is not like something that we planned. This is just what it is around us right now. Like there's no one fucking outside, you know? So just seeing cars parked in the parking lot, like not moving for weeks in my complex to so when me and my son went to go do this kind of photo shoot, I picked locations that's supposed to be busy, like the martyr station, which is our, um, train, train system. Mm-hmm. And there was nobody fucking in there. You know what I'm saying? It's just us. And, um, it looked like really fucking eerie and scary. Like, holy shit. Like we felt like we were the only people on the planet just fucking walking around. Right. You know, and then we found this one spot where you see him in front of like behind a cage or, and I was like, yeah, let's get you in there. Let's, let's, let's get that emotion, how everyone feels right now, mm-hmm. that we, we're trapped, we can't get out. And let the photo speak for itself. I'm not looking for no accolades and like that. It's just for me, for kicks and giggles for myself. Um, yeah, but, like, but, but, but this is, a, again, an opportunity. This, as I'm thinking about it, as I've seen your pictures on Instagram, and for those who haven't, go to Johnny's Instagram account and, and take a look at these pictures because here's, here's me thinking big picture. And that is you can make, you know, both a, a virtual and a physical book out of it. This could be a coffee table book. Yeah. You know, this, this could be so many different things. This is, 
This could even be you making uh, a business as far as selling the photos to make money that way. I mean, there's so many opportunities that we're not looking at. We're, we're looking at, you know, this big wall of, oh crap, this coronavirus, I have to be trapped in my house. You do, but you don't. No, yeah, yeah, actually, you're absolutely right. Like um, me and my son actually gonna do a photo shoot today. Um, I'm not sure of what, it's a lot of times it's just, obviously in my past, whatever I see, N- not since he drives, you know, he's 20. I'll let him drive and I'll just say, yo, stop. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to get a picture of this. So it gives me, and I sit in the back seat because sitting in the front seat to me, I can't, it's just a different view for me. So I'll have him pull over, we'll do some shots or whatever. And we're thinking about going into the, into the city today. Just to have, cause I have yet to go into this. I live in a, in a suburb of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. It's like saying you're from Chicago, but you live you know, right. in, in the burbs. Yeah. So, um, and Atlanta itself, the city itself is only 20 minutes from me. So we're going to go, go downtown just to see what it looks like and probably just walk around. And again, just take pictures of what's happening right now. And I'm, I love black and white. That's, 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 my, that's my favorite. Um, and just trying to capture someone in the picture and then, of course, of course the background. So you can really see the story behind it. And if I can put some together with, with those pictures and you know, document a couple of things in the bottom of each picture, or even just have maybe an introduction of, of how I feel and feeling through this time and then have pictures to follow. That's something I could definitely put together. Yeah. To put out there, you know. Well, well, let me ask you this. What, what is it you want your um, followers to get out of your pictures? What is it that you're trying to instill I want them, in them? I want them to understand that they're not alone, right? Hmm. And they, they know they're not alone, but you still wonder what other people are doing, how they're handling it. And this, you know, to let people know that, hey, you know what? We still have to operate. So one picture, we are in front of a restaurant, but it's kind of shuttered, right? right. And, but in the, in, the back, in the background, you see a sign that says now hiring. You know, so little things that I, I know I've captured in there. Um, and to the point to where, like I said, we go to the, the martyr station, the train station, and it's just fucking empty. But it says, the sign says, no, shuttle buses here. But there's no shuttle. There's no buses. Um, my goal is to take pictures of more people doing daily things, but maybe may with a mask on. Maybe I can find someone at the bus stop with a mask showing that, hey, they're still moving they're still doing they're still taking action but they're taking precautions they're taking i like that they're taking actions but they're taking precautions absolutely that's so if i can capture those moments you know what i'm saying and interject what i've done already and put that together to show the progression of the state of what we're in to okay it's empty now we're starting to move now we see a populace but now how is that populace interact and engage with one another and that's why i spoke i spoke to you you know yesterday about this topic would be about engagement Mm -hmm. and my photos i think from what i'm trying to get from it is is that just trying to show people the transition you know um again my photos is i'm just playing with the camera i'm not the best photographer i I don't even consider myself to be a photographer i've just taken shots the best way i know how i use a 50 millimeter uh, still lens you know um, I love the way the 50 millimeter or works. It's almost like you know your eye, the way your eye works. So mm-hmm. have a 50 mil. I use that. I, if I had to walk up to get close up, I do that. That's it. I take a lot of fucked up, on you know shots as well. <laughs> that could have been real cool. I'm like, damn, I fucked that up. But um, I have an old Nikon, you know that I use. Uh, it's been, I think it's been, I had it for five years now. So, uh, but it's been a workhorse for me. So I, I, I use it and I enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? So me taking photos, I definitely enjoy. Uh, I don't consider myself to be a photographer. You know, like I said, I just, I'm just capturing things that from my lens, what I see. My wife, lovely, always tells me that you just see something different. You're always noticing some shit I never noticed. Mm-hmm. So, and that's why I love your photos, because it, it's exactly that. Yeah. And I'm going to say you are a photographer. You really are, because you do have that sense that vision of seeing something different. 
and uh, you have to believe in that. You have to believe in your talents. I mean, I mean, like the logo you created, that's talent. Um, yeah, that is talent. Um, the logo uh, that you did for me, that's talent. Your photography eye, you have talent. So don't, don't belittle a lot of your photos. They're, again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. They're learning opportunities. You're learning, you know, different angles, different lights, different apertures, Absolutely. you know, film speed, you know, all of that. I mean, you can take one photo and create it different ways. You know, it's like a bottle of wine. You Absolutely. Could, a bottle of wine, you open, you could have two bottles of wine from the same year, same uh, uh, vine. Once you open them up, they're going to taste differently. And that's what I love. Oh, absolutely. About wine. Absolutely. No, I think but this is where people need to figure out what, the, what their thing is. Right? Yeah. This is where people have, yeah. You, have the, you have the time right now to really figure shit out. And I get it. Listen, it's, it's rough. You probably didn't pay your rent. You're probably behind on some bills. You know, you're probably worried. You know, I get all that. I really, really do. Because I'm part of that as well. You know, you're not alone. But you're going to have to really focus on something. You're really going to have to really figure out what, what has been your passion for all of eternity. And you always gave yourself the excuse that you have no time. And now is the time to go after it and make it happen. And listen, I have, I have a niece that she's in New York. She has a skincare line. And she's a uh, esthetician. And she actually had just literally opened up, I want to say a month prior before this whole shit happened, her own little shop to give facials. And she was, she started getting clientele and she had to close up her shop because of course that engagement, but lucky enough, she has a, she had a product. So um, been working with her the past few weeks, you know, uh, to, to tell her, Hey, now the shop is closed, focus on your product, push that right now until if and when you can't open up your shop. Right. And she has been doing it and she began to orders. My daughter as well. She has an eyelash business, and she's been giving, still selling eyelashes, but we're doing drop offs. Mm -hmm. You know, so people are coming to her parking lot. She's like, "Here you go, boom." She's taking pictures of it. She's still making a couple of dollars here and there from it. Do find figure something out. Yeah, something. You know, there's access. There's still access to shit. Don't think nothing is there now. Don't, don't get it twisted. Amazon's not doing really two day prime shipping anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's depending on if it's a type of item it is, but get things going. This is the time for you to really take charge of your life. And lovely Ray knows I'm not trying to go back to a regular day job. I, I don't want that. No. Those days are over for me. Uh, I really want to make my money off this podcast, off my writing, photography, just just being creative and having fun with it, and and just enjoying fucking life. Mm -hmm. you know and then. Right now, enjoying life is what you make out of it right now. I can be bitching and moaning and saying, damn, I'm locked in my house. Oh, my God, the government, how dare you try to keep me inside? It's not that fucking serious. It's it's serious, but you, re you still control what the fuck you want to do. Once I, I see I fucking military out in the street, then I figure out my run to Canada. But until then, it's, it's, it's not that way yet. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we make too much money the way we do things as far as capitalism to even go that route. And that's what people don't understand. Greed is what made this country. And greed is what's going to take us out of it. Point blank period. You know, we, of course, everyone wants to say, you, know, you got to be, you know, the, human, the humanitarian effort has to be there. Yeah, it does. But at the same time, it's going to motivate these people to make shit happen because they're not making no fucking money. So that's why they want the economy to start back up again. Because people were winning big time, but the economy has never been uh, has been stronger or bigger in a very long time. The way it, it, the growth was, and it needed it was kind of a kick in the ass, right? I agree. I agree. Yeah. So the bubble I, was going to burst agree. regardless. Yeah. yeah. The bubble was going to burst regardless because you can't go up forever. It does definitely give it a kick in the ass. What happens now, though? Right? It's going to get back, and it's going to be. It's not going to snap your fingers, click your heels, and go back to. A, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. Correct. It's going to be a trickle effect. There's millions of people out of work. And there still may be people out of work because things are changing. Restaurants may not be able to open. 
what does that look like? Do you, that means do you have more sous chefs? Are you doing ghost kitchens? You may not be doing sit-ins. You know what I'm saying? I got to find the Lewis Howe. Oh, I don't even know how to do this. So my thing is, is this. Learn. Pivot. You know, look at how you can contribute to your livelihood, to your solely economics in your home, right? And how you can function. Starting a business right now, I think it's the best fucking play. Hey, everybody bought fucking flour and bread. I need to know what the next fucking bakery is going to come out of this motherfucker. I'm trying to find this Lewis Howe. I think it's Lewis Howe talked about what happened like business wise, what came out of uh, a lot of these. Yeah, and I can't fucking find. Uh... Wasn't alcohol? Everyone's drinking right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, one of our, there's a distillery here in town that has been doing uh, uh, packaging their drinks. My wife picked up a couple of drinks for us last night and oh my God, it knocked me on my ass. It was so good, but it knocked me on my ass. So um, I love supporting our local businesses like that. Absolutely. And that's why I'm kicking myself for going to goddamn Buffalo Wild Wings when there's another wing place that we've gone to, but unfortunately they weren't that good the, the last time we had them so that's why we went to buffalo wild i'm like i can't support corporate i know people work there but i can't support a yeah. corporation like that and luckily i'm not going back to buffalo wild wings no i hear you man i think you really want to there's a as a small bagel spot had just opened up around here as well and now they're doing they're selling their food from their, their home yeah and i'm like fuck it let's, let's do it like we still got to support people. You still have to spend money. You still have to get items. Um, we just can't shutter ourselves in the whole time and do nothing. I think people did it for the first couple of weeks. The people who are already getting tired of shit are doing other things. The people who are just sitting and waiting, I, I need you to get the fuck up and do something. That's the only way we can get back and get, get this country back on track. And if we get back on track, the rest of the world is going to follow too. Now, oh, Yeah. Definitely. No. I mean, it, it's exactly what you just said. It's you can't you can't live in fear. You you just gotta keep moving forward. No, I, don't, gonna... honestly, I went through that in nine eleven, right? So when I was there in New York for nine eleven, um, yeah, it was scary. You know, we we really thought we got we got hit, so we thought we were at war, and which essentially we were. Right. And we didn't know what was going to happen next. You just hit the biggest fucking building we have. What what next? And then there was rumors going around, people knocking in doors and robbing and, and killing people and, and looting was happening. And so going through that, and then the reason why I moved out of New York was because of 9-11, because I felt trapped because I was stuck in an island in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. All the bridges and tunnels were closed. I couldn't get the fuck out of there. Right. And then that's where I moved the next year in 02 to Georgia, to Atlanta. I was like, I need to get, have access to different states. Yeah. I need to move my family out of, I can do so. And this reminds me of that. If I need to fucking leave, you best believe we're going to fuck out of here. You know, I drive all the back roads on purpose mm -hmm. just so I know exactly how to get the fuck out of Dodge. If I got to go to Alabama, uh, I'll go. Not the best place I want to go to, uh -huh. but I'll fucking go. Right. But again, I would never feel trapped. I came to a place to where I could have my weapon any given time. You know, I have, we have neighboring states that allows us to have our weapons go to those, those states. So I moved to a Republican state on purpose to have those privileges. <laughs> 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 and that was, that was my thinking, though. That was 20 years ago of how I thought. And then for 20 years later, have something like this happen, which is totally different, but now it's impacted the entire world. Some people, you know, as far as those doomsday preppers, they feel like they're on a high horse or they're ready, right? And then you have people who just, the everyday, you know, paycheck, paycheck, paycheck American, they weren't ready for yesterday, let alone a fucking virus for the whole entire planet. Well, and I think that's a good wake-up call. I really do. That, you know, if you're somebody that is, like most most of us living paycheck to paycheck, I think this is a great learning 
uh, that, okay, I, I can receive, you know, my, my paycheck, but what, what else can I do to create income for my family, for myself? Exactly. And that income just to go into savings for you to hold, hold tight mm-hmm. on it. If you can live off your, your, your regular day job and create half of what you can make online or somewhere, you know, just another revenue stream, that's huge. Because right. you see that you see that bank account grow, you go from two hundred to five hundred to a thousand. Wow! Oh shit! I, I saved a thousand. Let's see what else, how much more I can save. Well, I, I just and yesterday, because uh, whenever I'm I'm on sites and there's things that I want to save, so I found this one article called eighteen. Come on, pop up. 18 freelance sites to find your next gig. So there are so many freelance sites out there as a photographer, as a writer, right. as a videographer, you know. Yeah. There's so many different ways. Even, even if you make an extra $15, that's an extra $15 you just made. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's where people have to understand though. You have to go after it, man. Just yeah. go after it. If you really want change in your life, you're going to have to do some shit that may not be what you actually want to do yet. And I think also you have to understand that when you are doing something, stick with it and don't keep on trying to spread your wings too much. Because you start having other ideas and you say, oh, let me do this as well. But you haven't executed the first one to its whole yet to its full growth once you get to that that place and it has its full growth then you can go ahead and start adding the other things on but people need to just figure out one thing kill it become that subject matter expert in it Mm -hmm. then branch off to the next thing um i think think people just have sometimes people are their worst enemy they keep on stopping themselves going to the next idea not focusing on one i have that fucking problem I'm speaking from experience, you know? Well, I think it, it goes back to when I've coached people on, um, you know, what do they want to do when they grow up? And one of the things they get trapped in is the, the to-do list. Yeah. So they write down, you know, 10, 15 things that they need to accomplish and it becomes a to-do not list yeah. because they get overwhelmed. And so what I tell them is, uh, HVAs, high value assignments. So each and every day, you, or even the night before, you write down just three things, three things of what do I need to accomplish the next day. And I, I've, I've been really disciplined lately on that because, you know, being home. So for example, one thing I wanted to accomplish yesterday was I wanted to, I, I looked at uh, my stats as far as uh, people have signed up for the blending the family newsletter. I'm like, holy crap, there are 40 people. And I, I remember at one point there was 19. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I need to work on the newsletter. So that's what I did yesterday. And the thing is, I, I was not good at creating because I, I use MailChimp for the newsletter. Right. I went on YouTube. I found this easy tutorial on, on how to create. And it's almost done. I just have to, um, what I did for this newsletter and you're in it, by the way, I did the month this month. So for, for May's newsletter, I recapped all the podcasts that I did for, for April, something simple as that put in some links. Yeah. Description. Um, there's also going to be, uh, I interviewed somebody who is going to be kind enough to uh, give the listeners a 20% discount. I'm putting that in, in the main newsletter. That's all I wanted to accomplish yesterday. And I'm almost done. The only reason why I'm almost done is because I still have to produce one more podcast for this month to add the link to it. And, and come May 1st, it's going to be in those 40 people's email box. And I don't have a overwhelming to-do list. It's just, that's what I want to accomplish. That's, and I think that's what's going on right now is people are so overwhelmed 
They have all these things they need to do or should do. It's like, no, just funnel it down. What are one, two, maybe three things you want to accomplish moving forward day in, day out? Yeah, I think people get stuck on a lot of not having money. And when I started writing my book, I released it two years ago now. I put it on Amazon. It cost me absolutely nothing. I created mm-hmm. my own graphic. You know, didn't have, you know, you're going to have to teach yourself some things. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to be, you know, the jack of all trades in the beginning before you can hire someone that specializes in something, right? So did my artwork for my book. Now I look at it, I'm like, oh, I'm tearing it apart now as I know, right? I'll probably do an updated uh, version of it coming soon. But yeah, as you go on, you get to learn things. You do become a little bit better. You, get, you have more knowledge. You know what's good compared to bad. Listen, when I first drank my first beer, they all tasted the same to me. Yep. Same thing with wine, right? <laughs> and um, not until I acquired the taste and my palate started getting trained, now I, now I don't know what wine I love, what wine I could tolerate, or what wine I hand in the fuck no, right? Same thing with, with what you're working on and what you're going to be learning. You, everything's going to sound the same, look the same in the beginning. But as you continue do, doing it and seeing it day to day, and you're learning and comparing yourself and absorbing more information that's out there, YouTube is, is I, I go, YouTube University, that's my best friend. Mm-hmm. That, that's my schooling for everything for me, editing my videos to putting this shit together, you name it, you know, attaching this to my computer, figuring that out, you know, mm-hmm. all that shit. You have to do that. And that, that just takes sweat equity. That's what it takes. It doesn't take any monetary investment at that point, you know, but there's no such thing as a zero investment. There's always some type of investment you have to put into it, whether it's time. Mm-hmm. Of course, and most of the time, there is going to be some monetary shit. I had to invest in microphones, right? I invested in the lighting. I bought me a camera. I didn't buy it all at once now, but it was a trickle effect. There you go. My microphone. But you have to, you have to invest. And when you get that little bit of money, you don't get the best thing right away. You get the thing you can afford. And then you upgrade as you go, mm-hmm. right? And that's what I've been doing for years now. I, I, I've looked at affordable but quality equipment. And then I said, well, now it's time for me to upgrade now. I'm not going to sound. Because now I can hear the way I sound, right, from different microphones. Because the untrained ears are like, you know, you can hear bad shit. But you're like, oh, well, you can hear the little nuances from each mic. Now I can discern which mic sounds great. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm going to upgrade this microphone. But this has been my best microphone yet. Right. So well, I have uh, I have the Yeti, the blue, and uh, it 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 still works. I love it, but because I travel with it, it broke. Um, so I need to look into investing in a new microphone that I can carry with me when and when I go back on the road. If I go back on the road, but that's another story. But I, I agree. I mean, uh, it, you don't need you don't need a Hollywood production. No. You really don't. No. Uh, I was listening to a, a podcast, and and it, it, it frustrated the hell out of me because I was so excited about the people that put this podcast together, but their sound quality was horrible, just horrible. And it's just like you don't need a lot of money to invest in the things that you, you need. I mean, especially when, when we're talking, you know, audio, you just need a decent microphone. Okay. That's it. Um, I, I, I remember when, you know, when it came time to, to launch uh, the podcast and that's the first thing people said was you just, just get a microphone. That's all you need. And so I've been super happy 150 plus episodes later, you know, I, I never get comments of, oh, your audio sucks. It's usually the host sucks, but not the audio. <laughs> so that, I take that as a compliment. As long as, as long as the audio is good, that's, and, and again, it's, it, it's the little things in life. It really is. You, so it is, man. You don't need to overthink things. No. And I, I, I think that's where we're at. It's, again, it's just about starting. Yeah. And whatever little investment you can put into it, do so. You're going to have to maybe, you know, take something away from something else to invest. That's part of investing. 
you know, people always, it's funny how people are willing to probably spend a million dollars they don't have to invest in something because it makes sense to them. But when it comes to putting 200, 300 bucks, $500 on something to invest, they think it's a scam. It makes no sense. All right. So that's why I, you know, folks who want to get into podcasting or to YouTube say, oh, it's saturated. There's a lot of people in it, just like there's a lot of people working, right? No different. Some people are going to get in there and rock the house and stand out. Some people are going to try it for a couple of weeks and never do it again. I'm never worried about competition. I'm always worried about myself and what's the best content I could bring for entertainment mm-hmm. value, just for thought provoking value as, as well. That's really it. Other than that, I can care less. Now, do I listen to other podcasts? Absolutely. I want to learn. I want to hear, you know, different things because you have to study what you're in. You know what I'm saying? You know, auto mechanic is not going to just look at, you know, just not pay attention to the, the car magazines and not be involved in racing. They're going to be a part of all that. You know, the whole culture. Podcasting is a culture. You have to be a part of it. You have to listen to other shit. Mm-hmm. Um, make friends that have podcasts, right? And that's what you have, you have to dive deep and immerse yourself into that culture. That's like with anything that you have to learn, though. If you don't do it holistically and fully, then you can be half-assing it. And you're just doing it because you want to say you have a podcast. Uh, what's the yeah. use of saying that? That makes no fucking sense to me. Right? So my thing is also, don't worry about your followers on a particular platform. You know, just put out content. Just put content out. Get the right hashtags on there that's going to be able to show your content and then let it work. And you're going to learn what's, what's going to be best for you as you go on. And as you grow, people are going to keep on sharing. And the best thing, honestly, is to ask people to share your shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's really the best thing you can do is tell people to share your shit. And once you have some more money that you can spend it on yourself, I say do it on marketing. You know, market yourself out there. Make a short clip of something. You know, show, show your best of your podcast and put it up there and, and market yourself and spend a couple hundred dollars on marketing for yourself. You know, that's that's my next move this year is to do marketing. Well, the other thing too is don't be don't be afraid to ask for help. Oh, but yeah. also, uh, for example, uh, what's it called? Headline headline video is the app I use for uh, the audio clips so I can put on Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter. And somebody reached out to me saying, "Hey, Tommy." how do you do that? What is, what are you doing? I could have just said, fuck you. Yeah. This is all me. I, I don't, I, but that's not how I'm wired. I'm like, Oh, it's called headline video. It's a real simple uh, app. It, it ties to your podcast and I don't have to do anything. It sends me emails and I just upload it. That's it. And I think that's where it's good, you know, to share your knowledge with other people. Again, it goes back to, you know, to YouTube University. Uh, when when um, uh, GarageBand uh, just, I think it was just last year, upgraded and they upgraded immensely. And I'm like, how the fuck do I do this? I had this these podcasts that I recorded. I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do. Went right to YouTube, found a tutorial, simple tutorial. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now sharing you know it's so important especially you know when you are a creative person and people come back going i reached out to johnny nomad because i really wanted to learn how to do x and he responded back to me those are the good stories you want to hear not absolutely that that motherfucker fuck him (laughs) I'm, i'm gonna you know i'm not gonna listen to him i'm not i'm gonna deactivate my account because you know sharing it's so it's so so that's what it comes down to good yeah absolutely it comes down to all that and then again that's i say all this because that's not to get off track the main topic but again this is about how you we had a main topic yeah engagement remember okay i I wasn't engaged i wasn't engaged that's why i wasn't engaged at all you never are now how are you going to engage going forward not just with you know the populace, but also with yourself now. Are you really going to go ahead and, and, and pull your strings and say, I have all the time in the world, let me fucking do something. Mm-hmm. You know, so go after it. Engage in your passion and figure out how you're going to do that and get it to the masses now. And it's going to be challenging. You have to fucking think. 
and you're going to try some shit. It's going to fail. You're going to have to think again. You know, you're going to have to maybe get some insight from someone. They may give you shitty advice, but it may jar something into you. That's, you know what, that one thing they said just sparks you on something. All of that is necessary for you to grow, to be creative. You know, there was, I told you, I was going through a creative rut. I did not know what the fuck I wanted to do. Conversations were just kind of just like, is this the right person I want to talk to? Is this person really interesting to me? Am I just putting a person up to put a person up now? I was really like beating myself up as far as what am I, what's my qualifying factor for someone to be a guest? Right. And it was like, um, no, I said, you know what? I'm going to take my time out. I wanted to figure out how can I bring more, you know, more value. And I was doing that. And, and um, I still have not posted yet. Uh, remember I told you I had interviewed someone, my, my mentor in real estate. Mm, yeah, right, right, right. And um, I haven't posted yet. And I'm going to go ahead and start re-editing again because it's fairly long. And put it up there because real estate is a shithole right now, right? But I'll put it up there. Uh, just for for value and say, you know what? This was the direction I was going to go. It's probably not the best because my first. But I said no, but that's the direction I want to go. Once this is over, how do I you know do that kind of quality, almost documentary type of style of recording, and um, and figure it out? That's really it, you know. And really bring something else to to my channel. Well, I I know a lot of people have heard the name. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk mm -hmm. and the one thing I really admire about him is how he he started I mean he started you know with wine library tv yep. just sampling wines and then realizing that as much as he loved being in the family business there was something else out there and so he started to grow the social media aspect of it and you know, he, he puts out so much free content. He puts out yeah. so many great ideas. And, you know, for you, once, once you start, you know, creating that, that, that real estate model, that real estate business, I could see you with a separate, you know, Instagram yes. page with, you know, photos of houses. But, but you, since you have that photography, I, a photographer's eye, you could really do well with probably changing the real estate market as far as being a creative, being somebody that understands social media, somebody that understands how to attract followers. And I really firmly believe that it's going to take somebody as, as, as the word is, a, a disruptor such as yourself in the real estate market, because it's just like you said, it's in the shit right now. But if you can reverse engineer that, you you can be huge. I mean, Absolutely. I mean, brand wise, financial wise, it just takes like you were just saying, do it, just fucking do it. Um, there are days where I just I just sit here in, in the home office going, all right, what do I want to create, and it goes to the 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 a b testing so for example i'm i'm testing this this is the first time i've had a guest say hey i'm going to give you a discount i want to make i always kid about this on the podcast um with terry cruz always talking about his success is your success yeah. so i i want his um kindness of giving the listeners this discount this 20 percent discount and i want to figure out how can i make his his product successful by sharing with other people yeah and so it, it just goes back to just do it if it fucking fails do something else don't overthink it just try something else yeah i agree i agree yeah I, you said it right there brother uh, uh, it's, it's it's time to take the action. It always has been time to take action. Mm -hmm. It's just now it's just it's just balls to the wall with it, you know. Really spitting out some content, and that's that's my goal. You know, coming up this week, where you're gonna see a lot more on my IG page, a lot more you know distribute on on YouTube. Um, having tough conversations, having people challenge me on my podcast as well. I want this to really be like a conversational piece to where I'm calling someone out. 
or you're calling me out, you know, and that's how it should be. They, I look at the news, and I get disappointed. Mm-hmm. There's so much you have to filter through, right? So much I have to read before I can, I feel that the resources I've read make sense and that yet yeah, this is a true story or a factual story, right? Because truth is a different thing, right? What's factual? And I'm like, I want to bring those honest stories. Even to my friends, I'm like, yo, you know what? You have a conspiracy theories. Let's talk about your conspiracy theories. Come on a podcast. They've all told me they don't have no time. You don't have no time. Why not? You're doing fucking nothing right now. So I want to bring this to light because at the same time, you're scaring people. You're putting out these theories, these half-ass baked ideas, and you got people scared for people who don't know how to like, really read shit and, and go through resources. So it, it's time to really challenge myself, challenge my content, and that's it, you know? So, but um, brother, it was great having you. Oh, it's always a pleasure to be on, on your show. Let's... Um, Let's, let's stick a fork in this one and um, we'll catch up with you next week. Get you back on again, see how your week is going with your family. And, um, you know, you're just, you're just, you know, you're just a regular, bro. So <laughs> I, I don't know how your listeners like having me on here too many times, but I, I just love talking to you. So it's, it's all no, good. So do I. We always have, you know, great conversations about real shit. And uh, we'll try to give people as many pointers as, po- as possible. That's really it, man. That's what it well, comes down to. Uh, all right. So here, here's what I'm going to leave, leave you and your listeners. So again, every day, just figure out what is one thing they can accomplish. Yep. One thing. Don't get crazy. Don't do a stupid to do not list. Just what is one thing to move you forward? That's it. Exactly. Let's leave it at that, brother. We'll catch you later. All right. All right, man. Peace.